Well, welcome back. For any of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ryland Parrott. And yesterday, I went ice fishing without taking any camera gear, which is just a total inexcusable maneuver. However, um, oh, I've got a fish on camera right now as I'm trying to film this. He's staring at the Cisco. You guys, look at this. What an intro this would be. <gasps> Are you serious? Okay. That is sick. That is sick. That is sick. That is sick. <sighs> Reel this bait up. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a big fish. Okay. Okay, Rylan, chill out. Chill out. Chill out. He might have just dropped that bait. Oh, my goodness. Don't drop that bait. Okay, what do I got here? Oh, you can see him swimming. Oh, my God. That's sick. He's still got the bait. He's still got the bait. He's burning line. Oh my gosh. Burning line. Burning line. I got him. I've 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 got him. Oh my gosh. Is he taking my tip up here? Or I'm wrapped around the tip up. I'm wrapped around the tip up. What kind of camera angle am I presented with here? Wow, this would just be sick. Okay, Ryland, let's see. How am I gonna change the camera angle? I've got slack line. I've got slack line. That's no good. That is no good. What kind of camera angle do I got? I'm hoping you guys can see something in frame. This is like the rawest footage ever. I promise you that wasn't even staged. That was legitimately, you could see that fish eat. What do I got here? Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Oh my gosh. Don't snap me off. Don't snap me off. Don't snap me off. Oh, what is going on? Raw footage. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is a better angle. You could see that fish came in, grabbed that Cisco, turned into a cookie monster, swallowed that bait full. Am I going to have to tail grab a pike here? What an awkward land job. Jeez Louise. However, I'm not sure how good this angle is. I really, really apologize for possibly the worst intro ever. I'm gonna get this fish right back in the water, unhook it, get it all unwrapped, show it off quickly, and then finish my intro, and hopefully you guys enjoy this video. So I've kind of mellowed out after that crazy intro, and I've got this fish unhooked, 43 and a quarter inch fish. So to have that during an attempt to film an intro, eating on camera, both on the underwater footage, which you'll see, plus my GoPro made it pretty funny. I apologize for the shitty uh, camera angle at the beginning, but it was a lot of chaos. Obviously you could tell, with a fish burning line with a car right there and camera cord and all sorts of stuff going on. It's not the easiest thing to do in a calm matter. So I have this fish, 43 and a quarter inches, in my live well outside, got it unhooked, and to show it off right there. And a, a really, really nice fish. You're gonna get it right back in the water. I don't even have a chest camera on anymore right now. So, but you can probably tell, hands off the fish. And it is gone to swim another day and to hopefully make someone else's day with the fish of a lifetime. That is just an incredible, incredible start. I will be honest though, that was actually not the first fish of my day. This is day two. I'm going to actually close this window and then reconjoin with you and give you maybe a proper intro and introduction into what is going on. Because as you could tell, that was a lot of May Day and you may be a little bit confused as to what situation I am, I'm in. However, I will be right back and discuss a little bit more about what is going on. So what I was actually trying to say in my intro was yesterday I came ice fishing without any camera gear, mainly due to the fact that I was not planning on doing any sort of uh, video. I was just planning to come to a popular lake on my way home and stock up on some Cisco's for some pike and possibly lake trout plus catfish and all sorts of crazy stuff that I might need bait for. However, I came to the boat launch and noticed something sticking out of the ice, which really piqued my interest. I came over towards the object to notice a mirror sticking out of the water. So of course, as you saw with that first eat on camera, that is a vehicle submerged through the ice. So I noticed this yesterday and the only footage I had was through my underwater camera because I had no GoPro gear or anything for this spot. However, I came back because I became super obsessed with landing a pike on a sunken vehicle. So I came with some GoPros today, obviously my underwater recorder yet again, and, and within hopes to salvage a video and have a fish on the ice and not get snapped off on the BMW, of course. So I will roll some clips from yesterday um, of some fish that came in. I had a couple eats and a couple just fish kind of maybe nosing around the vehicle, which was pretty hilarious. And today 
This is actually not even the beginning of my day. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm filming my intro at like four o'clock, which is a little bit of a rookie move, of course. However, I just noticed that I never even did one. So I tried to do one and then that happened. So maybe it is a good intro to this video, kind of all over the place. However, I did land a fish earlier in the day, which you might see later in the day, if that makes any sense. However, that fish was, like I say, 43 inches, which is an incredible fish. And to be able to get it in that setting was just extra legendary. Um, before I get in too in depth into anything in this video, a quick safety lesson, because as I can tell from people driving on this lake, um, this is a main truck trail I'm actually set up on, which you might think that's a little bit of a D word move. However, nobody better be driving on this because I've got a, a sunken vehicle right beside me, which is a huge red flag for anybody, I hope, on the ice. Secondly, I'm on like three inches of ice. So big trucks and SUVs and people in vehicles have been traveling on this, which I'm not even sure how that even would possibly make sense. And I have been one of those people at points in the season when I came here for first ice walleyes or first drivable ice walleyes, I guess. So to be able to drive on three inches is a little bit of a Mythbusters, uh, series you may be experiencing here but in all seriousness if you see sketchy ice or a sunken vehicle around the area do not drive on the ice please and thank you a little bit of a uh, self-advice which i need to listen to myself on sometimes as well however enough talking and i'm not sure where this video is going to head to next however i hope you all enjoy this video and more importantly stay safe on the ice it's absolute craziness <laughs> this is my second day trying to land a fish on this vehicle I'm sorry my GoPro wasn't recording during the main thing. I've got my underwater camera still in the water. As you can see, this fish is dogging me in there. So it's instant chaos. Everything is wrapped as you would have obviously expected. This fish ate it. You'll be able to see, I just had a big fish come in and then that other fish came in uh, right after, kind of looked at that bait for a couple minutes and then eventually ate it. You can see, oh, I'm wrapped badly. Oh, this fish better still be on. Obviously instant chaos. Okay, I'm going to put my rod down and probably attempt to unwrap it on my camera cord if I can. You can see that fish. Oh, my camera is done recording. <gasps> okay, he's right here. I'm going to take my camera out of the water. He is huge. Okay, so obviously, like I said, instant chaos. It's been a two-day mission. I will roll a bunch of the clips of fish that I've seen come in. I haven't got them to eat. And my GoPro, of course, wasn't recording at the time that this fish came in. So once I set the hook, I finally yelled at it because I didn't want to be too loud with obviously only a couple feet of water. This fish is extremely large. It's right below the hole. Oh, it's a big fish. On like no ice, of course, he's barely hooked. And finally, that is definitely the first fish ever caught on YouTube on a BMW. I'm hoping to hopefully catch another one. Um, with some better uh, video quality. Obviously though, I didn't want to be too loud because I'm in like three feet of water, as I've mentioned several times before. So I didn't want to be screaming at my GoPro when a fish is quivering right below the ice on a bait and ruin it because I've had like a dozen fish come in, haven't landed one and then finally landed that fish. Obviously the camera cable and everything else just adds extra chaos to it. So I just wanted to hopefully land this fish and I'm very happy I did. This is a probably a 42, 43 inch fish, super thick, incredible fish right here just a beauty i'm gonna get this fish unhooked very quickly grab my pliers and then give him one more look and then send him back down to hopefully maybe buy the bmw or take a better look at it okay i've got this fish unhooked he swallowed the bait so that was a little unfortunate however i did get the hook out so it's all good this fish is 43 and three quarter inches long it's a big big fish uh, of course catching one of the bmw just adds icing on top of the cake that was absolutely leg legendary it has taken me now two days. I'm on day two, afternoon of day two, so not two full days. But like I've said before, I've had several fish come in and just cannot pay one to bite. I don't know what it was. However, this fish finally gave me some redemption, was able to land this fish, and it is a true beast. An absolutely incredible fish. 43, three quarter inch. Absolute stud of a fish. Nice fat. I'm hoping it's a good shot. Obviously, the underwater shot should be legendary. You should hopefully see this fish go down into the water. I'm going to hold it for a second. This GoPro does not want to turn on, which is unfortunate. However, you can see hands off the fish. It is gone. And hopefully that will eventually be, well, I'm sure it already is, the first fish ever caught on a BMW right there, first hand. And I'm going to now hopefully unwind. My heart rate is up crazy. I'm going to hopefully have maybe a pack of Skittles, recharge myself, give me some more confidence, and hopefully showcase another big pike 
on the BMW. Well, that will wrap it up for today's video. I thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, obviously today, a little bit of chaos with all those pike. However, I do not make up a pike's eating schedule and they seem to always bite when I'm least prepared, which is seemingly always. So a little bit of a red flag there possibly. However, being able to just see a fish is a win for me on that car and have all the pike interactions yesterday and today that we had and to finally land two big fish is just such a bonus. I've never seen a video on YouTube um, and I've looked pretty hard on a sunken vehicle with big fish cruising in on eating baits on it. So hopefully that's a plus because my main goal of this channel is of course to bring stuff that has hopefully never been seen before and that's a pretty tall order. I might camp in an igloo or something in a couple weeks. However, we have no snow so that might be a tough task of course. However, like I said, I thank you guys so much and hopefully this brings awareness of what not to do on the ice while driving. Not anything against that person who sunk their vehicle because it did provide me with some great fishing today. But in all seriousness, uh, stay very safe out there. Drill holes if you're not sure and don't drive a vehicle on anywhere that looks sketchy, which this definitely did. So in all seriousness though, I thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay safe on the ice and I hope to see you again. Well, welcome back. Karen coming at you live. In all seriousness, I am back at home and this video really continues to be all over the place of course now. However, I've done now three underwater uh, videos and I've yet to do a thorough walkthrough of the camera I use and how I like to actually uh, record my underwater strikes. So I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough now. Of course, this is the Aquaview 7i that I like to run. It's only about $550 a retail price from Cabela's, which is actually not terrible considering obviously um, inflation and the price of fishing electronics on the market today is just outrageous. So relatively affordable unit. And then as my recording device, I've got the Aver Media um, Live Gamer Portable Box or whatever it's called. It's meant for uh, nerds that play video games. Um, however, it does a tremendous job of actually showcasing underwater strikes through the AquaView. So that is obviously one of the things that I would uh, strongly suggest if you're gonna use the AquaView. Obviously this AquaView, not only does it do a great job of actually um, showcasing strikes, but I run this AquaView before I even drop a line in a lot of cases. It allows you to um, search for structure, search for bait fish, search for whatever you may be looking for that you just can't see from above the ice. So it does a great job of that. One of the things that I actually use it for uh, pike fishing is to see what kind of bait fish are in the area because that does a great job of actually telling me what size of baits to run. If it's more of an emerald shiner based or a smaller tulip based, then I'm gonna go a smaller bait. But if there's a bunch of jumbo, mondo, cisco swimming around, then I, I like to obviously upsize my bait and try to be a little bit more natural and match the hatch. So those are one of the things that I like about this AquaView. Of course, it's not outrageously expensive like my live scope, so that's a nice thing. Of course, the Aver Media. And before I forget, one of the other things is you need a power box uh, that you plug into the Aver Media as well to charge it throughout the day. So a portable battery, the Aver Media, and then all you do, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already or not, but you just attach a HDMI cord, a generic HDMI cord to the back of your AquaView. And one of the last things, I keep rambling here, but one of the things that I would strongly recommend with an, an AquaView is to immediately take out the stock battery. The stock battery only lasts you like three or four hours. And that's just terrible if you're on obviously a fishing trip that maybe is a day or two. So I've exchanged the stock battery and I put a Dakota Lithium battery in it because Dakota Lithium is just the way to go. I'm saying that without being sponsored. Dakota Lithium is seriously just the juice when it comes to longevity and just keeping everything charged throughout the day and maybe even multiple days. So that's my tip and trick on the AquaView. I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. Obviously that car was just next level of course obviously even catching fish on the car is just something that i would never expect to ever be able to do so i hope you guys enjoyed a thing or t uh and learned a thing or two about safe ice and what not to drive on so anyway enough talking i thank you guys all so much for watching again and i hope to see you on the next episode